You will not believe the idiocy being spewed by Ben Crump. Ben Crump, the ambulance chasing lawyer that represents every criminal who gets crossways with the police, that Ben Crump. He has quite possibly said the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Shamika Michelle and I are gonna talk about it. We're also gonna talk about Beyonce and her country music song. And we'll talk a little bit about this super mayor <laughs> that said something almost as stupid as Ben Crump on a special Saturday, Fearless. Welcome, welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, happy Saturday to you. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining us. Shamika Michelle and I will uh, bring you some special content on this Saturday. This episode is brought to you by our good friends at Good Ranchers. Fall in love with beef, chicken, and seafood all over again by subscribing at GoodRanchers.com. Use my promo code FEARLESS to get $240 in free bacon with your order. All right, uh, let's bring in uh, Shamika Michelle. Shamika. <clears throat> you got to watch this video. Al Sharpton and Ben Crump, they got some like hour long special on the Peacock Network talking about black culture and how to fix everything. And uh, Ben Crump's suggestion on how to fix the crime problem that uh, terrorizes a lot of black zip codes. Wow, you won't believe it. Let's uh, listen to Ben Crump. We can get rid of all the crime in America overnight, just like that. And people ask how Attorney Crump change the definition of crime. Mm. Of course. If, if you get to define what conduct is going to be made criminal, you can predict who the criminal is going to be. It sounds yeah. like we're criminal, though. Yeah. Our existence no, is the culture. criminal. But they That's made no, no. the laws They make the law to criminalize our culture. To fit us. Black culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so when I think of Eric Garner, I always think of stuff like that. Lucy Sugar. So Ben Crump's solution, let's say you live in some zip code in an urban area, and, and I think what Ben Crump is saying is like, if your cousin gets shot and killed by Pookie, let's just call it an abortion. Let's call it a, a pro-choice uh, <laughs> move. Let, let, let's, it, it's abortion. That's not murder, that's abortion. If we just redefine crime, it all goes away. Shamika, I, I've heard a lot of ridiculous things and I, I've, I don't have a lot of respect for Ben Crump. I've actually met him and conversated with him uh, in Las Vegas for an hour or two once. Man's not that bright, he's clearly a plant, but I, I did not think he was capable of saying something that stupid. Jason, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And maybe I'm being willfully ignorant because I heard exactly what you heard. What do you mean we need to change the definition of crime? As you know, my uncle was murdered in December at 6.30 in the morning in his home because some black man was outside claiming he needed help. So should we adjust the laws so this black man won't go, you know, get charged? for murder, won't spend the rest of his life in prison for murder. This was murder, clear as day, and yet being Crump want us to change the definition. All I heard was, you know, if, uh, you know, we, we, we could keep them out of jail if we all uh, turn uh, the crime to something different because it's, uh, it's just us getting up. You sound stupid, sir, because when my house was shot up, it was shot up by a black man, robbed at gunpoint, black man, car broken into, black man. These are crimes all day long. And as a victim of crime, I want them to be punished as such. I don't care what color they are. And we do not need to change the laws because our people don't know how to act or behave. It's really that simple. Train your child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they should not depart. I tell my kids all day long, you can go to jail. 
I'm not coming to get you. And if more parents took that stance, we wouldn't have so many people out here feeling like they can just live lawlessly and do whatever they want. His argument is based on a myth and a lie and a distortion of truth that <clears throat> has become pervasive. And, and uh, there's the prolific writer or the, the, the author, celebrated author, Michelle Alexander. And, and I'm telling you, I love Michelle Alexander. She wrote the book, Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration, and blah, blah, blah. And that book, and, and trust me, I loved it when it came out, and I'm a huge fan of Michelle Alexander, even to this day. But that book was distorted, and it created this myth that most people locked up are locked up in America's drug war. And these are nonviolent offenses. And, and it's just not true. State prisons house far more people than federal prisons. So these federal drug crimes and law, whatever, that's not what has prisons filled up. State prisons are filled up with violent criminals. Now, perhaps their violence is attached to their drug selling, drug use, uh, things like that. But violent crime is a real problem. It's not just murder, it's assault, it's different kinds of attacks. And, and so how do we redefine this? If, if, if someone assaults you in the street, should we just say, well, you know what, a UFC fight broke out, let's don't call it a crime. Is, is that how we're gonna redefine this? And, and this entire thing that they taped and put out on Peacock and, and Al Sharpton's involvement in it and the other men, black men that are involved in it, it, it it's, it's a brainwashing of, it plays into racial idolatry, but it's just a brainwashing of, of black people of like, hey, you don't need to get your values in alignment with God. You need this, the, the government and the culture to get its values in alignment with your lack of values. And, and I just, I can't believe this stuff is being paid for and promoted and publicized and broadcast over TV. And that's where I, with Cat Williams, and I know we refer to that a lot, but when he talks about industry plants and all of this stuff being paid for and, and people, and, and only guys like Crump, who can barely speak English, Al Sharpton, who's no sort of minister, that's who we keep giving these platforms to and keep promoting. Hey, these are your leaders. These, these are your thought leaders. This is what you should think as black people. And anybody with common sense, a Clarence Thomas, a Ben Carson, these are the worst people on the planet. They're sellouts, they're coons, they're Uncle Toms. They hate their black skin. It's all a scam that's been bought and paid for. Absolutely. And let me also say, I almost didn't see Al Sharpton in this video. If he would have turned slightly a little more left, he would have completely disappeared. It was like his head was just hanging on the wall because that's all I could really see. But I totally believe that they would put this out on, on television because it's more of the low expectations that the Democrat Party has for black people. And it by bothers me because you have these people like Ben Crump, Al Sharpton, who, who get on the bandwagon. If you can take a black dog into PetSmart or any type of place and they can be trained to sit, stay, roll over, why do we continue as black people to act as if we don't have the ability to learn not to do certain things, to learn to do things a certain way. Anything that we don't feel like doing is considered white or white supremacy, and we are just too dumb, too stupid, too lazy to learn how to do it. And I just refuse to buy into that notion. And it bothers me that so many people are willing to. We always talk about the ancestors, the ancestors this, the ancestors that. Well, my ancestors, 
knew how to carry themselves. My ancestors knew how to dress, knew how to carry on a conversation, knew how to go through throughout their day without hitting somebody over the head or going into the Apple store and snatching phones off off cords. Why can we bring up the ancestors when we want to pretend like we're in some type of witchcraft and we need some type of power from them, but we're not trying to look to the ancestors to know that we can actually operate in this world or in America with some decency and respect? Why don't we look to our ancestors for that? It's a great question. The only thing I would disagree with it's a small disagreement is we have been trained and programmed like animals in, in terms, but the training and programming baits us into, we get little cookies and doggy treats. If you act in a buffoonish, criminal, debaucherous way, that's how you get the little doggy treats in terms of, hey, we will make you a rapper and a millionaire. D do you have any drug offenses? Have you killed anybody? Have you sur survived being shot by other drug dealers? We will give you a doggy treat and make you a rapper and famous and one of the most influential people in the culture if you have. Oh, you can claim to be a minister while preaching and teaching all secular values? We will give you a TV show on MSNBC we will, make, we will get you regular visits to the Obama White House. We will make you an important historical figure if you're willing to pretend to be a minister while preaching satanic values. Oh, you're an idiot with no command of the English language? You're border, you clearly rode the short bus? We will make you a lawyer, a very wealthy lawyer, all you have to do is run around, and if any criminal, any black criminal, gets harmed by a white police officer, you stand next to them and play the race card. We will give you a doggy biscuit, and, and you will be one of the most celebrated and respected people. You'll get visits to the White House. You'll be friends with Joe Biden and the most powerful people in the world. And a special treat, a very special treat. We will give you an all expenses paid trip to Epstein Island where you can have your way with little kids. Mm -hmm. We've been trained. And, 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 and people are sitting around like, look at those doggies and look at the treats they're getting. He, oh my God, there's a rapper that preaches pornography and look how much money and fame he has. I need to act like that. Oh, look at Al Sharpton. He's thrown away every Christian value he may have been taught at some point. But he's got a TV show, and he's famous, and he gets to run around with uh, uh, Barack Obama, and he gets to pretend to be one of the most important smart people on the planet. Everybody sees where the rewards are. Mm -hmm. If you go the Clarence Thomas route, <clears throat> if you go the Ben Carson route, if you come up from nothing and become one of the greatest surgeons of all time, one of the greatest Supreme Court justices of all time, we will slaughter your reputation and make your own family disown you, make black people hate you. Mm -hmm. the, the training is remarkable that has been done. The treats and the discipline, the spankings. You, you get a newspaper and spank your dog. They got that and they got the doggy biscuits. It's, whew. Uh, Shamik, I want to move on. I'm glad we, we talked about that. There's a uh, different version of Fonnie Willis out here. There's a, a mayor in, I believe, Illinois, in a small town in Illinois. Uh, I think her name is Tiffany Henyard. Uh, she is the super mayor. She's a Yaz queen. She is, uh, you know, a little bit Stacey Abrams, a little bit Michelle Obama, a little bit Oprah Winfrey. She is setting the world on fire and just... Uh, she's also corrupt, but <laughs> anyway, uh, let's listen to Tiffany Henyard uh, talk about uh, the trials and tribulations of being a black female leader. 
I do anything as it relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you, though. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mm. What, what is that? No comment. You don't know if you were in Las Vegas? Of course I do. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? You're not going to answer how taxpayer dollars are being spent? That seems I just, odd. I just answered it. What do you mean? I just answered your questions. You said you wouldn't answer about Las Vegas. You asked me a question and I responded. We can't dance together at this time and this moment. This is going to be Black History Month, right? Y'all all say Martin Luther King had a dream, but guess what? I am the dream. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor. If y'all ain't learned that yet. Black History Month. Oh. Of course I'm going to give away a million dollars to help you pay your mortgage and your rent. Of course I am. The mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. We getting scrutinized in the media. For what? Loving on the people? Showing them that they matter to us? We going through the fires for y'all. It's Black History Month. As the first African-American female mayor of Dalton, of course I'm misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black, and y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all So she's been caught pretty much red-handed taking taxpayer money to pleasure herself in Las Vegas and in other ways. And, you know, y'all should be ashamed of y'all Black woman in power, and y'all attacking her. Y'all hate y'all uh, your thoughts. When that man was asking her about Vegas, the only thing her response was missing is, it's Wheezy, baby. This was Little Wayne in a wig. <laughs> this is what I saw. But look, Jason, <laughs> when I first started your show, I remember <sighs> saying, I think there's more women that think like me and less of them. They are just louder now I'm really, truly starting to believe that things that started out as what some people may call harmless feminism, I want to be seen, heard, taken seriously, be able to make decisions, has gone into full-blown mental illness. I think that's why it's not a class thing, because... You, you see Fannie Willis doing this. You see this Tiffany person, even Michelle Obama, as the president of the United States, had the audacity to say she didn't like her husband for 10 years. Or she said, you know, I, I don't think people see me. You're on every magazine. Everyone around the world knows exactly who you are. Yet you would still play this role as if you don't have a voice as a black woman. We're seeing complete delusion from these women. First of all, never trust, trust a woman in a wig with four inches of hair glued to her face, calling it baby hair, number one. But number two, Jason, this woman, they said, who is 40 years old, had a meeting, a professional meeting where she dressed as Nino Brown, had a stuffed animal dog, a, a, sto a stuffed toy there, and cue the DJ to play Rihanna's Bitch Better Have My Money in a professional meeting. So this doesn't even, this not even about uh, class. You know, we talk about Sexy Red and Sukiana. This now is rampant mental illness among black women because they have gone unchecked for so long. They are so delusional that they don't even know the difference between right and wrong. And anytime you try to say anything to them, you're racist or you're sexist. This little town is in debt. I think five million dollars. She has taken police officers from off the force to be her personal security detail. They say that if you don't put money towards her, she will actually have them create something to take your business away from you. 
this is, she has no business in power, but th- I see this so much, even in my community that we'll vote for people that we know, people we go to church with, people we used to go to school with. We don't care what the policy is. We don't care what they believe. This is like a popularity contest. And then all of a sudden you look up and you're wondering what happened to your city or your town. It's because you've allowed somebody to be in position that should have never been there. And when it comes to black women, oh my goodness gracious, the amount of women that I saw praising Fannie Willis or praising this woman thinking, you know, she's only being attacked because she's a black woman. No, she's being attacked because she's in office acting like an orachitane. She has no business doing the things that she's doing, yet people will continue to praise her or have her back or take up for her because she's a black woman. And she can't say, this is wrong because she's never been told that throughout her entire life. My grandmother turned 90 here recently. I'm going to go out on a limb, Jason, and say women 70 and below, unless you are someone like me that can recognize the negative effects of feminism, you're not even paying attention. And everything you do is right because nobody has been able to tell you you're wrong. Reprobate minds is, is what we're talking about here. And, 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 I get and understand and and somewhat agree that this is a black woman problem. But the reality is, this is a reflection of a secular mindset. And so this mental illness issue that we have going on with men and women, but in this instance, we're talking about women. It's a byproduct of a secular worldview. And, 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 you know, walking away from God and being given over to a reprobate mind. And so, <clears throat> and again, this is across the board. When you look at the white women from Madonna to all these people that <clears throat> think abortion is some kind of health care and some kind of right, uh, you know, that's a reprobate mind. And, and yes, black people unaware that we've been stripped away from a biblical worldview and given a black worldview. And so everything that we've been programmed to think is like, well, as a black person, how do I feel about this? And then, so that's where your truth starts with skin color, as opposed to the conversation we had uh, Wednesday on the show uh, with Gabriel Wrench and during Tennessee Harmony. It's like when a woman is grounded in biblical a biblical worldview and scripture and her point of view comes from, well, what does God say about this rather than, or or how should I think about this as a Christian? She spews a level of wisdom that is unmatched when she's grounded in biblical truth. And and that's what I loved about Wednesday's show and what Gabe pointed out. And and again, Anthony and Virgil co-sign is like, wisdom is represented in a woman in the Bible, and, 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 but when you remove the Bible and God from a woman's worldview, you get a reprobate mind, and that's what we have here with this woman and women across the board that have been walked away. And that's how women are sitting around <laughs> letting men compete against girls and women in sports and in the locker room. And hey, you know what? Yeah, we need all gender bathrooms and our kids need to be, they're just, they've just gone crazy. And we have a mental illness because we've just walked, when you walk away from truth and stand on lies, chaos and insanity uh, will follow. Uh, I got one more topic. I want to get to Beyonce before I do that. I want to talk to you guys about uh, one of our great sponsors, perhaps our greatest, Preborn. Every day, young, scared women who don't think they have options are choosing abortion. Preborn seeks these women out before they make the ultimate choice and introduces them to the life growing inside of them for free. Ultrasounds. Just because you, just because of those of you that donate, we're able to give, Preborn's able to give these women free ultrasounds. To donate, dial pound 250, say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby. Or give the way I prefer to give, preborn.com slash fearless. I'm sorry, preborn.com slash fearless. 
Uh, guys, this is part of our worldview as fearless soldiers. Preborn.com slash fearless. Uh, Shamika, finally, uh, Beyonce, she's made history. Claims top spot on Billboard's hot country charts, makes country music history. She's the first black woman to lead the country music charts. Oh, it's, it's historic. She's the greatest. And this piggybacks off the topic we were just talking earlier. It's just like this whole thing about, oh, you make history. Every time a black person does something, Beyonce is the first person to cut a fart while recording a country music song while being a black woman. That's history. No, no wonder we're so delusional because they define anything we do as history making based on skin color. The Bible clearly says like, ain't nothing new but the doers, cut it out. Uh, but your thoughts, from what I understand, I haven't heard the song, but the song is pretty much trash and it reaching number one is just testament to Beyonce's got a beehive, a bunch of groupies that will support anything she does. Absolutely. It's terrible, Jason. And you know, some people think Beyonce is the next Michael Jackson because they say they're saying she keeps getting lighter. But yeah, the uh, song is trash. It's terrible in comparison to other country music. And so, yes, you're right. This was nothing but the beehive that went in and got this song to the top because it sounds like it was created on a Casio in someone's room. And when I say that, I don't mean that I think the production is not high quality. It, I mean that it's someone pretending what they think country music should sound like. And I understand Beyonce is from Texas, but I've sat in Nashville. I've been to Texas. I've heard real country music. This does not compare. And so again, this is this whole black women being delusional because they were upset that the country stations were not playing her song, but they shouldn't. It's not good. When you listen to other country music, there's so many other songs I would rather hear if I'm going to turn to a country station above this bubblegum pop supposedly country song. It's it's not good. It is, it's just not good, Jason. And anyone saying otherwise is completely delusional. And I'm not worried about the beehive coming after me because I've been stung by a bee. I survived. They died. So this right here, I feel <laughs> very confident in saying it's trash. Uh, better or worse than Ben Shapiro's rap song? Ooh, I, you know, I'm going to say worse. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say either. worse. I listened to yeah. them both and neither one of them should be doing what they, they tried to do. Ben needs to stick to podcasting and, you know, going to do speeches at colleges. But if that, if I have to say which one is worse, I would just say the fact that we all knew Ben Shapiro wasn't a rapper. You know, he wasn't trying to say I am the best at this or you all need to embrace me as the new Eminem. He didn't really do that. Beyonce's fans really truly believe her song is good and should be accepted. And the fact that it hasn't, they're blaming it on, you know, white people being racist or white supremacists and not wanting to accept black people in country music. Black people have been accepted in country music for a long time. And it actually sounds like good country music. This does not. So I have to say hers is worse because Ben Shapiro knew his was not that great. You know, it was the best he could do. And he didn't try to, you know, we, we don't see him in a bandana now as she's walking around in her cowboy hat in every picture that they've put out. I spent a lot of miserable Saturday nights on my grandmother's and grandfather's Davenport in their very small apartment watching Hee Haw uh, on <laughs> Saturdays and trying to keep my eyes away. Eyes open. So I know black people got a long relationship with country music. Augusta Combs, my father's mother, my grandmother, she loved hee-haw. And I used to sit on that 
You, did, you, you ever heard a couch called a Davenport? That's what my grandmother called it. Had plastic all on it. Oh. You'd get a little sweaty sitting there on a Saturday yes. night because there was no air conditioning <laughs> in her apartment. <laughs> yes. Watching Hee Haw with my brother. Uh, anyway, thank you, Shamika. Have a great uh, rest of your weekend. Uh, before we go, hey guys, uh, every year our culture seems to sink deeper and deeper into the quicksand of hopelessness and despair. Our moral compass no longer automatically points to the true north of truth and godliness, but more to the chaos of sin and doubt. It's time for men of this country to rise and put on the full armor of God. We're going to do it again at Roll Call 2.0. You guys remember Roll Call 1 right here in Nashville? We're now ready for uh, 2.0, June 1st uh, this year. We're going to talk about how growth requires sacrifice. That's our theme for this year, growth requires sacrifice. We've got a great array of guest speakers. We'll have some live entertainment. It's going to be awesome both Friday and Saturday. Saturday's the all-day event on June 1st. Friday, we'll have some special VIP events on Friday, May 31st. Go to fearlessarmyrollcall.com right now, particularly if you're a church leader or a minister and you want to bring a group to Nashville, Tennessee for this awesome, awesome event and you want to energize the men in, in your church, in your ministry, you want to encourage and inspire them, have them join us here in Nashville, Tennessee on Saturday, June the 1st, Roll Call 2.0. FearlessArmyRollCall.com. If you're a minister church leader, we got special deals, discounted rates if you bring a group. Uh, we got hotel recommendations, the whole nine yards. Uh, this year's event sponsored by Preborn. We love you. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation. We all just want to have freedom. Sitting on the corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving all the seed when we all want to be free. We want freedom. I just want, I want to be, I just want. I wanna be, I just want, I wanna be, I just want.